Hey guys, what's up? It is your buddy Keith, and I am here live again in the control room at the one and only world famous Essex Recording Studios, just outside London in Southend on Sea, England, baby. And I've got a very rare Jackson Custom Shop guitar from 1987 to share with y'all today. If you are new to the channel, smash that like button, click subscribe, come join our circle of friends, our little family here on the internet on old YouTube. We've got about 10,000 fans and subscribers. We, uh, we drool over all these guitars. We comment on them. We share our knowledge. We get people that, I mean, I've had people that built these guitars in the factory from this era, hop in the comment section. Uh, really, really cool. So it's a fun place, guys. Welcome. All right, so let's chat about this guitar. Well, first of all, it's for sale. So if you do want to buy it, just hop on the EssexRecordingStudios.com website, click in the for sale section, scroll through to you, till you see the Jackson uh, listing here, and then you can check out like any other website. It's powered by Shopify and Stripe Payments. So yeah, great. Uh, it's also on Reverb.com. All right, back to the guitar. So this is a 1987 Made in USA Jackson Super Strat. I guess they call this body style the San Dimas Strat. It's from that era. It's got a San Dimas neck plate. Although it's from the era where there was uh, a shift from San Dimas, California to Ontario, California. Where the guitars were constructed until Fender bought out the company years later in about 2002. And moved production to their Corona, California facility. Now there's some remarkable things about this guitar. There's some features that I've never seen before, and there's some features that are the best I've ever seen. And I really want to show you up close, especially on the back. So for starters, this is uh, one of the super in-demand crackle finishes. And I, was, uh, I learned what they actually called this finish by taking off the back tremolo cavity cover and reading the inspection card. It's a little cheat code for you on some of the old 80s, not all of them, but a lot of the 80s strats and, and guitars, especially the bolt-on ones, had inspection cards hidden in the tremolo cavity that tells you the details, like the work order number, the color, sometimes uh, who inspected it, like this one. Um, yeah, so this, I always called them fire crackle or lava crackle. I've seen those two used. It's a really cool finish. Um, lots of little detail and kind of almost like a, a, a gradient type finish along the edges with how the red bloods into the black. It's really, really cool guys, but believe it or not, and I know in the video it's looking a little bit brighter. So this is what it looks like right now. I'm under some really bright studio lights and the phone tends to make everything go light, but this is what it looks like when I mess with the phone's lighting setting like that. This is, and it's a little bit more red than that, but they call this Porsche, like the car, or Porsche, depending on how you like to pronounce it, but Porsche Red with Black Crackle. That is the official Finnish name provided from the factory for this guitar, which is pretty insane. I never knew they called this Porsche Red. I've heard Ferrari Red used sometimes um, during the 80s, of course, Red was the color to have, whether you had a Porsche or a Ferrari, um, you know, and I think they called it Guards Red was the official Porsche color. They had a couple different reds, but the Guards Red was, mm, that was the one to have if you had the, the poster on the wall with the 911 Turbo with the big whale tail, that's what you had. Now, other unique features, only one knob, one volume knob, and still has the San Dimas individual selector switches for the pickups, which is really cool because you can have all of them engaged. You can have none of them engaged. You can have just the bridge and the neck. You can do all sorts of different permutations that you can't normally do on a five-way selector switch. So that's really cool. Now I was telling you that this has a, a feature that I think is the best I've ever seen. And that is this Jackson Floyd Rose Tremolo. This, I'm trying to remember the model number they gave for these, but this is the best looking one I've ever seen. It's the cleanest. Look at how crisp 
the licensed under Floyd Rose patents is. That is super crisp. Usually these are all rusty. You can see, I mean, this thing looks brand new. The Jackson logo, super crisp here, right there. And this is a tremolo that you saw kind of uh, popular, I think about 87 to 89 um, on USA Custom Shop Guitars. They have these big fat uh, saddle blocks here that are, uh, that's one of the distinct features of it. Um, and of course, the Jackson logo on the side with the licensed under Floyd Rose. The pickups, these are USA Jackson Custom Shop pickups. And you've got the Jackson logo. They had a they had white paint, just like the headstock logo. And of course, over time, as you'll see, usually on all the pickups, definitely the single coils, the white fades or gets worn away. You can touch that up if you want. You can bring it to a guy, and I've seen people restore that if you're really pedantic. Um, but if you're going to play it, I wouldn't worry about it. But either way, it is raised above the plastic, the actual logo there. I'm going to try and get it in focus. Yeah, you can kind of see it here on this one. See how the logo sits above. And you can see it there. That's built into the plastic bit, or what do they call it, the bobbin? Is that what they call this thing? Never really, the cover, I guess. Yeah, it's built into the, the cover with the Ray's logo. You can see also how the pole pieces are staggered, which is quite interesting. You've got uh, just this string raised on both singles, and then you've actually got a couple that look almost re recessed. But yeah, really cool. These things are nice and hot. They sound great. A lot of people keep them. I'd say, you know, when you have a humbucker, single, single format, you have a lot of options. And don't be afraid to experiment with whatever your favorite brand pickups are. If you want Bare Knuckles or Duncans or DiMarzios, just make sure you save these. Because um, they're expensive, like, you know, sometimes you can get them for like 80 to 100 bucks each, somewhere around that. Sometimes you'll see them on sale real cheap, 40, 50 bucks. But save them, because you won't have the original pickups and wiring for the guitar. But it's such a simple process to swap out the, the pickups and the wiring. I just say, make sure you keep your, you know, keep your original pot, keep your, all your electrics, keep absolutely everything. So that you can, can put it back to original and it doesn't affect the value or anything because you know everything here that you're seeing is completely original on the back you've got the jackson tuners and they've undergone different logo changes over the years so these are the early ones with the tm trademark i think you've had you've had them with uh the the r logo the trademark logo maybe no copyright anything like just jackson um over the years it, it's changed but uh and then the size of the the font but yeah that's correct for 87 this beautiful maple neck that uh i don't know if it's if it was roasted back then or if it's the aging of the oil someone who's an expert will be able to say i'm not a, a luthier or a wood craftsman but it looks very uniform this nice dark kind of roasted brown uh finish it looks beautiful and it feels excellent so here's another feature that is the best i've seen i would say i would say this neck plate so this jackson neck plate has got to be the cleanest and most crisp that i have seen from this era its serial number is 4050 you've got the san Dimas address still and it's custom shop because there's no double zeros in front of it um as they did with standard production bolt-ons also at this time jackson was still everything was a custom shop order it wasn't until 1990 uh with the ontario factory that they started the new format where um, a regular production guitar that they started making got a, a double zero in front of the number for Bolt on guitars. Little tidbit there. Now, this crackle finish goes throughout the whole guitar, and some 
spots. It's it's very, you know, intense and looks like a really like wild lightning bolt. Other spots, it's bigger. It's you know, no two of these are the same. And there, you can go online and watch how they made this finish. It's actually really popular now. They've brought this back. There's reissues with these crackle finishes, but this is the original real deal. Um, and you can tell this guitar had very light use because the, the back plates, these get all scratched up big time if um, they've had loads of play. You get lots of buckle rash and stuff. This has the most minor little thing like right there. These are all like brushed steel. Um, so yeah, very gentle use. In the lacquer right here, you can kind of see it if we get it right under the light that we're talking about. Minor, minor stuff, but like, you know, if you really were, were a maniac, you could go and just like wet sand that down and buff it because it's just in the lacquer. It's not through to the paint. Um, but I mean, this thing looks so presentable and you should have a few little scuffs and whatnot on a on a guitar that's i mean this thing's what this is 34 years old there's one little chip right there but again the beautiful thing with the red and black guitar is you can touch it up quite easily so this has had the the sharpie treatment there just to make it look uniform with the the black section you know and i think that's appropriate and the right way to deal with that again that's so that's like the worst blemish on the guitar for this age, especially with it being a metal, hard rock, heavy metal guitar, then, um, man, it really is a survivor. Now, my favorite part is this right here, because I was saying like, this is the best neck plate and the best, uh, Floyd Rose of this generation that I've seen as far as the condition. This has got to be the best condition inspection tab. Usually these are all like super faded, can't read anything on them, um, or they've been covered with paint or a, a, a lacquer, and they're nowhere near this crisp. Look at that. You can read uh, work order number, due date. What does it say? Neck, looks like neck color, body color, graphic, yes, no. And then the bottom is uh, inspector. So the work order number, 2343. That's different from the serial number, 4050. And it should be because the work order number and the actual serial number assigned once it's built is two totally different things. Also, interestingly, didn't realize this, but from 87 to 89, they actually had um, the serial numbers weren't going in order. and they lost, or they had a, like a, a, a factory misstamp of the plates from like 5,200 all the way up to 6,000. So there's actually, all of those are missing, and there aren't any apparently um, in that, that uh, region of the serialization. That's pretty wild. But yeah, so there's your work order number. Then the date, and this might be a little hard to see in the phone, but it's 11, it's the due date is 1130 1987 so november 30th 1987 that's how we date that and then this is what i was telling you about the color i've never seen this referred to and you think that there'd be like copyright but it's porsche see it's a little hard to see but it's porsche red with black crackle and it actually says it looks like it says 3m black with black and I, so I don't know if 3M is like what they use to make the effect. Uh, we had like a lightning, like blue and silver one, which was quite metallic. On this one, this looks like it has less of a metallic effect. I'm trying to show you close up. This looks more like the the guards red that you see in a Porsche 911. There's a little bit of, like, black specks in it. But I think that's just more of the uh, effect of how they make it. I'm going to go on the front here. Sorry, I got a bit of my fingerprints on here. Yeah, so, no two are alike. But this is the Porsche Red with black crackle. That's what they have written down. 
and then the uh, it says for, uh, for graphic it says no which is interesting because I consider this a graphic but I guess they consider this a finish I always called this the crackle graphic um, but the way they make it is more of like a very um, I guess uh, drawn out process for creating a unique finish there you go and then the inspector it's a bit hard to see here it's in cursive let's see if we can get that angle in there it's right there you can kind of make it out it looks like three letters it looks like it looks like r-u-s it looks like russ but it could be rich you see that r-u-s or r-i-c-h rich russ or rich you did an awesome job inspecting this guitar i love it and that's it guys that is our 1987 usa jackson custom shop super strat san dimas strat lovely 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 maple fret or excuse me maple neck rosewood fretboard mother of pearl dot inlays these really pop it's a bit hard to see right now it's so bright. Ah, uh, the frets look fantastic. Loads of meat. Loads of meat on these frets. It's a bit hard to see there. But, um, yeah, nothing, nothing to complain about. These look great. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get going. Uh, I'm going to get this uploaded, get this listed on the site. Uh, if you want to hit us up on the socials, it's at Essex Recording Studios, Instagram, Follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, at Essex Recording. Like I said, get in touch. Um, website, Reverb. If you want to buy this, we'll send it to you anywhere in the world, guys. And thanks for hanging out with me and checking out this 87 Custom Shop guitar. Stay tuned. More guitar videos coming up after this. Later, guys.